ladies and gentlemen, Liz and I are going to share our story about how her texting and driving car accident has changed our lives forever. Before the car accident, Liz was a good kid. She was an honor roll student. She had dreams of becoming a model and going to college. She had her own car. She was responsible. And she told me she never texts and drove. So when I would check up with her, it was through a text. Big mistake. Big mistake. On April 7th, 2012, a parent's worst nightmare happened to me. My doorbell rang, and at my doorstep was a state trooper. He began to tell us our daughter was in a serious car accident. And all I remember is screaming to him, is she alive? Is she alive? He said yes, but it doesn't look good. And then he bowed his head, and I just lost it. I just lost it. He said she was flown to shock trauma in Baltimore, and we needed to get there now. So when I get to shock trauma, I see Liz, she's still alive, and I remember running to her side, and I squeezed in between all these doctors and nurses that were working on her, trying to save her life. And I leaned down, and I remember I was praying, and then somebody grabbed my arm, and it was her doctor, Dr. Beatty, the doctor in charge. And he begins to tell me Liz's injuries, and there's so many. I start to zone out, and then I remember he kind of yelled at me, Miss Shaw, because I was not paying attention. He said, on a scale of one to four, four being the worst, your daughter is graded over three. I do remember that. And I remember thinking, my baby girl is gone. My baby girl is gone. And so then I asked the chaplain that they had, could we pray? So I had my head down and I remember I was praying. And I opened my eyes and I saw blood everywhere in the, on the floor, everywhere. And then I looked over and I saw a trash can. And it was Liz's hair was in the trash can and it had blood all over it. They had shaved her head. It was devastating. I remember my world falling apart around me. Liz had suffered a traumatic brain injury. She had many facial fractures, lung, lung collapse, too many injuries to talk about. She was in ICU for three and a half weeks. She did have some complications. We almost lost her again when she was in ICU, but she made it through that. She recovered enough to be sent to Kennedy Krieger for her brain rehabilitation. She had to relearn everything. She couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, she couldn't speak, she couldn't write or read. It was like a three-year-old being in an 18-year-old's body. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> I found out how her accident happened when she entered Kennedy Creeker, I went to go tell the officer who came to my door that I was sorry he had to see me fall apart. And that's when I found out that she was texting and driving and that's what caused her accident. And let me tell you, I was pissed because I asked her all the time, do you text and drive? And she'd say, no, mom, I swear I don't. I'll never do that. So when I would check up on her through a text, I thought she would be safe. So I had her phone from the accident. I ran home. I looked it up. I wanted to see who she was texting. And the last text that was opened or sent was from me. She was reading my text when she slammed into the back of a flatbed tow truck. It was my distraction, my fault. Do not text your loved ones. Do not. Your friends. 
Don't put them in danger. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Liz recovered enough to come home. And when she came home, it was great at first. Her friends came by all the time. People brought gifts. It was great. But then when it was time for them to go to college, to go back to school, life was moving on. It was not moving on for Liz. She was still relearning everything. And then that's when she realized how much damage she had caused, not only herself physically, but mentally as well, that her life was put on hold while her friends' lives were moving on. And she became deeply, deeply depressed to the point where she questioned why she was alive. Why did she live? What's the point? So she had to be admitted into a mental hospital. She was there for nine days. She got the help and the medicine that she needed to get through this hard time in her life. She began to forgive herself. We both began to forgive ourselves for our mistake. And I just want to say one thing about mental health real quick. If you're sad, if you're angry, if you're mad beyond your control, get help. It's out there. It's not horrible to have a mental health issues. It's not the end of the world. We're a perfect example of how you get help when you need it and you get back to your normal life and life goes on. Don't be afraid to get help. Okay? Sorry. Oh. And if I never got help, I promise you this, I would not be here today if I did not get help. You don't I would not be here. You don't have to go to a mental hospital. That, she was to the extreme. Speak to your counselor. Speak to your parents. Speak to a friend. Say, I'm hurting. I need help. Don't be afraid to ask for it. You deserve it. You deserve to live a happy, normal life. So when she got out of the mental hospital and a couple months later she began to say that um, she wanted to tell her story, tell people about her mistake. She made a video about her story through MIMS, which will be coming out soon, about her life, about her struggle after the accident and how hard it's been. Um, it's been two years, a little over two years since her accident, and it's, I'm not going to lie to you, it's been a long, hard, hard recovery for her. Some days are good, some days are bad. Definitely better, but you know, every day isn't great. I see Liz struggle every day to get back to the life that she had before the accident. And it was all over a simple text. And the letters were okay. That was it. That's what took and destroyed her life. So please don't make our mistake. I say ours because I, as a parent, should have known not to text my 17-year-old daughter who swore to me she didn't text. I lied to my parents all the time at 17. I knew better. You're young. You think you're invincible. I get that. But the technology that we have today, we did not have when I was 17. It's a lot more dangerous temptations for you guys behind the wheels today than it was ever. So please be safe. Please make sure the person you're driving with, who's driving you, is not distracted as well. Your life is in danger just as much as if you were driving. Please, please, please do not text and drive. Learn from our mistake. Okay, now Liz will speak. Thank you. Hi, I think you guys know my name. My name's Liz Marks. Um, before my car accident, my life was like pretty great. I definitely want to be a model. I want to go to college. But on April 7th, 2012, my life forever changed. I got into a serious car accident from texting while driving. But the thing is, I don't remember I don't remember two before the car accident or even two months after. I don't remember anything. 
Like, it's funny, like, April 7th, like, 15 days later was my 18th birthday. I miss prom, I miss graduation, I miss senior week. I just missed about it all, like, Mother's Day. I miss it all. I remember that I text and drove all, all the time. Everyone else was doing it, so I was like, hey, <laughs> it'll be okay. I lied to my family all the time about it, too. Again, this car accident has forever changed my life. I hurt my family and my friends. And my friends. I will always regret for hurting them for my mistake. At first, the car accident changed my life for the worst. But honestly, now, I honestly feel like it's for the best. The lowest point that I can remember is when I had to be admitted to a lockdown mental hospital for nine days. My thoughts at that time were like, why am I alive? What is the point of living? I had nothing to look forward to. I couldn't drive, I couldn't go to college, and I felt really, really ugly. I had nothing to look forward to but a lot of surgeries and therapy ahead of me. But with the help and the medicine I received, I realized how important life was. And I honestly, I wanted to live. I realized everything. Nothing can take my mistake away. Nothing can give me back more of life. The only thing I can do is to help save someone from doing my mistake, texting while driving. When I tell people my story, I want them to see all the scars all over my face and my, and my left eye. I look different, but I still think I look good. I can't smell, I can't hear, can't see. A lot of things are different about me. But I promise you this, I am happy. I shouldn't be here on earth, but I am. I really am. I give people that I talk to my wristbands. They're lime green because that's the color they spray painted my cards and seen with and documented it with. And sorry if I speak a little different, okay. <laughs> That's why my mom and I are wearing these lime green jackets. Um, and on my wristbands it says don't text and drive for list marks. I want people to realize how important it is to not text and drive. How texting while driving may lead you to have a serious car accident like mine. Or even worse, death. My life today is much better, but it took a lot in me to become who I am now. Please, don't make the mistake I did and don't go through what I did from reading or texting a, just one simple text message. Please, save yourself as well as others. Thank you. I know that listening to some of these stories has been difficult. It's still hard for me to hear some of these stories. As I told you, I lost my mother in a car accident. And when you've lost somebody you care about, it never leaves you. You always have that hole. And I told you when we began this, the reason we were doing this assembly program was because we cared about you. I've attended funerals of students. I don't want to have to do that ever again. And it would break my heart to have to attend the funeral of any one of you. So we're asking, yes, prom is coming up. Graduation is coming up. Senior week in Ocean City is coming up. Please remember this.
please be careful. We want you to have fun. We want you to enjoy and celebrate these times. But we want you to do it safely because we want to see you forever.